Hey everyone, welcome back. Hope you're having a fantastic day so far. So a new report shows that social security benefits have lost a lot of buying power since 2010. We'll be covering that report. Plus, is Trump's new social security idea a good one? We will be covering that as well. But before we go ahead and dive into the main content of today's video, if you wouldn't mind helping me out real quick by just giving this video a like, that just helps out with the good old YouTube algorithm, and also consider subscribing to my channel if you have not already. Plus, if you would like to receive up to $200 in free stock or $200 in free cash in a pinned comment below, I will be leaving a link to Robinhood. All you have to do is once you click on that link is just sign up for a free account and then simply link your bank account. You do not even have to make an opening deposit. At that point in time, Robinhood will be sending you one free stock worth all the way up to $200. And if you'd rather just have the cash, all you have to do is once you receive the free stock is just sell for what it's worth and then transfer the cash value right back to your bank account. Okay, so diving right into our first story at today's video, this one is from News Nation and from the Senior Citizens League. And they say that Social Security benefits have lost buying power since 2010. This, of course, is according to a new study. So they say that inflation has eaten away at retirees' budgets, and a new study suggests that annual Social Security bumps haven't been enough to ease the pain. Social Security benefits have lost 20% of their buying power since 2010, according to new research from the Senior Citizens League, a nonpartisan advocacy group representing older Americans. So to make up for the lost value, retired workers would need to be paid $4,440 more per year, or $370 extra each month, the study found. In January, the average retired worker received $1,907 per month in Social Security benefits. So basically what they looked at here is they went all the way back to 2010 and then fast forwarded all the way to date and went over each year and looked at what inflation actually was versus what the cost of living adjustment that was actually given out was. And they found here, you know, again, they would have to give $370 more each month to people receiving Social Security benefits to make up for the loss in buying power since then. So there has been a shortfall on a yearly basis of $4,440, meaning that pretty much the cost of living adjustments that were given out are you know based on a very bad formula because if these are supposed to keep people up with inflation and allow them to buy these same goods and services in the new year that they did in the previous year, but yet there's a shortfall of $370 each month over let's say like a 14 year period. That's a huge difference, it really is. Um, so it's, it really shouldn't be too big of a surprise that according to CNBC that 72% 72 72 of Americans worry that social security will run out in their lifetimes. Uh, Americans obviously aren't you know too confident in the current social security system. They see that one, what they're receiving isn't actually keeping up with what these same goods and services that they were able to buy in previous years. They see that yes, even though their checks might be getting a little bit larger by two, three, in the case of the last few years, 8.7%, it's still not keeping up with what they were able to buy in the previous years. They are not able to buy these same goods and services. They are not able to buy the same amount in the grocery store as they were in prior years, even though their social security checks have gone up. And not only that, the government has done a tremendous job at just funneling, fumbling away the trust fund where right now in the next decade or so, there's not going to be enough money coming into the trust fund to pay out everyone 100% of the benefits. And if they don't make some sort of change, there will have to be cuts automatically made across the board by all the way up to 27%. So once again here, according to CNBC, workers who pay into Social Security while they're working should expect benefits from the programs when they retire. Yet, 72% of adults worry that Social Security will run out of funding in their lifetimes, a new survey from Nationwide Retirement Institute finds. Meanwhile, 23% do not expect to receive even a dime of the Social Security benefits that they've earned. Millennials and Gen Xers are the most concerned the program's funding may run out. According to Nationwide's online survey, more than 1,800 adults 
ages 18 and up. The pessimism comes as the program's future funding status is uncertain. The trust fund the program relies on to pay retirement benefits is due to run out in 2033. At that time, just 79% of benefits will be payable. Voters in the November presidential election are expected to place a high priority on where the candidates stand on fixing Social Security. However, fears that Social Security benefits may dry up completely are overblown, experts say. So obviously, uh, the experts, uh, quote-unquote experts, are going to say that even though the trust fund may run out of money, there's still going to be enough money flowing into the system. As long as workers are working and paying payroll taxes into the system, there's at least going to be some money flowing into the Social Security Trust Fund. But the problem is, once again, there's not going to be enough money flowing into the trust fund. There's not going to be enough people working and paying taxes for there to be enough money in the trust fund to pay out everyone 100% of the benefits. So they're going to have to either cut benefits for everyone across the board by up to, let's say, like 25%. They're either going to have to raise taxes, so people who earn over $168,000 per year also have to pay uh, Social Security payroll taxes on all of their income. They're going to have to raise the payroll tax, whereas right now it's 12.4% going into the trust fund, 6.2 by the employee, 6.2 by the employer. Maybe they have to raise up to like 8% to the employee, 8% by the employer, 16% in total. They're going to have to do something. But again, this presidential election coming up is going to be a huge one. And uh, also, uh, the, the House elections coming up, the elections for the next people coming into Congress, everyone's House seat is up for grabs this election. And then quite a few Senate seats are also up for grabs. Those are going to be huge seats for Social Security as well. And if we can look at the a couple of different plans, Donald Trump, of course, said that we are not going to be raising the full retirement age. We're not going to be making any cuts to Social Security. And he also said that we're going to cut taxes on people receiving Social Security. So believe it or not, even though you had to pay taxes whenever you were an employee on your wages into the trust fund to pay out benefits to people currently receiving benefits, now that you're finally receiving some of the money back that you paid into the system, the government is taxing that money once again. So it's sort of a double taxation. So Donald Trump is saying that we should eliminate the taxes that you're receiving on Social Security benefits. But Forbes in this new article is actually saying it's a bad idea and they should not go through with it. So we're going to be going over what they say in this article. This is a former president and 2024 Republican nominee. Donald Trump has joined other politicians advocating for abolishing taxes on Social Security benefits. The idea may make a great political rallying cry, but it actually does not make a good policy. The idea undermines the financial integrity of both Social Security and Medicare and will, in fact, disproportionately benefit higher income individuals directly contravening the program's current progressive structure. Beneficiaries with incomes below $25,000 individually or $32,000 for couples are exempt entirely, while those with higher incomes can see up to 85% of their benefits taxed. The net result is that half of Social Security recipients pay no taxes on their benefits whatsoever, while higher, while higher income beneficiaries pay a fair share. As such, the removal of this tax provision would chiefly benefit higher income individuals, shifting the burden onto low and moderate income beneficiaries through potential tax increases elsewhere or benefit cuts. The proceeds from taxing Social Security benefits play a crucial role in uh, bolstering the financial stability of both the Social Security program and Medicare with proceeds from tax benefits credited to funds earmarked for both. The elimination of the tax would cost nearly $1 trillion over the next decade, a shortfall that will need to be made up somewhere else. Um, so again, basically the article is pointing out that if they eliminate taxes on Social Security benefits, it's only going to benefit those higher earners. And yes, that's true. Uh, those who are paying taxes, uh, up to 85% of taxes on their benefits is because they have a higher income over you know, a, a certain amount of money, whereas those who are not being taxed on their benefits are very low income. So if they remove the taxes, they're basically just making a point that it's only going to you know, help those out who already are making the most money. But again, if we look back in the very beginning, back in 1984, whenever these taxes were first put in place, I think only like 3 to 7% uh, people were taxed on their benefits. And then uh, since 
uh, the income was put into place back in 1984 that has not been adjusted for inflation. So then today, all these decades later, it should not come as a big surprise that close to 50% of people receiving benefits, whereas before it was like 5% are now paying taxes. So the fact that this was never attached to inflation, well, I think that should actually be adjusted upward at least, you know, maybe make it so you have to pay taxes, but at least adjust those tax brackets upwards. So then maybe we don't have 48, 50, 52% of people paying taxes on their benefits, uh, benefits that, you know, you already paid taxes on. So Again, leave your thoughts and comments below. Are you on board with Donald Trump's idea to eliminate the taxation of Social Security benefits? Leave your thoughts and comments below. But that's all we have for today's video. I certainly hope you enjoyed and found value out of it. If you did, again, I would greatly appreciate it if you could give this video a like. Consider subscribing to my channel if you have not already. And I will see you in the next video.